Okay, welcome to the instructor video on observations. Now, this is a big deal. This in interviews, and I know it. I keep saying that, but I'm saying it for a very good reason. To go and conduct an observation is to really be able to uh, get to the heart of what is going on in a particular setting. An observation can lead you to ask certain interview questions. You know, it can help you to go and read between the lines. The thing about an observation, the most important strength in it, is the fact that you see the natural ebb and flow for the way things work uh, in a setting that you may not be that familiar with. So, to start this off, I just kind of want to give you a little uh, picture in your mind about the nature of the way narrative comes into an observation. So here we go. Way back in the days when the grass was still green and the pond was still wet and the clouds were still clean and the song of the Swami Swans rang out in space, one morning I came to this glorious place and I first saw the trees, the truffula trees, the bright colored tufts of the truffula trees, mile after mile in the fresh morning breeze. And under the trees I saw brown barbalutes frisking about in their barbalute suits as they played in the shade and ate truffula fruits. And from the ripulous pond came the comfortable sound of the humming fish humming while splashing around. Yeah, I know you know where that came from. Now the reason I do this is part of the, the, the catchy narrative of Dr. Seuss books is they 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 can give this sort of whimsical uh, appearance of a place but it really just kind of puts you there that's what you want an observation to do so with that we're gonna get started on some uh, some approaches to this and ways to go and make it work for you okay so we're, what are the advantage of advantages of observations okay they allow you to go back and, and forward in time. They allow you to discover what is going on in the here and now and to be able to observe things that may not always come out in what people have to say about a situation. You get to use your five senses because all your five senses are very important in this process. Okay. So what is the checklist for observations? Okay, You're talking about what is the setting, where is it, what is it? What time of day is it? What is going on? What are the participants? What kinds of activities and interactions are going on? The time, meaning how long does it play out? How uh, briefly does it occur, etc.? And then some of the more subtle factors. We'll talk more about those in a minute. So the setting, okay? Whenever you go in to do any kind of an observation for your research project here, um, and be sure to review the syllabus for the assignment uh, requirements as far as uh, your observation goes. The first thing you're going to want to do is map the space. Now, this is to give you a, a, a different way to look at it when you look back at it after the observation is finished. And we'll look at some uh, examples of mapping the space here shortly. What is the physical environment like? What is the context? What you're going to want to do is go and write these things down. Now, some people will do this on a laptop in full sentence form. Some people will draw pictures of different parts of a room. Some people will uh, go and maybe make more of an outline form of um, you know words with short phrases, things like that. But what you're wanting to do is convey what it is like to be there to someone like myself and your classmates that are not there. So mapping, okay, I want you to read this really quick. Um, the, and I hope this illustrates how important it is to really go and map out a space. Now, if you can go and draw in three-dimensional, go for it. Otherwise, two-dimensional works just fine. As you go and look at something, you might also map the traffic patterns. Where do people come in? Where does most of the activity occur? Where are the windows? You know, what, what is the lighting like? What's the temperature like? Here are two maps that you can, uh, can, that you can compare. These both take the, uh, front, or, I'm sorry, take the perspective of research being conducted in a classroom, but you see what I'm saying. Okay? 
If you're going and looking at something that occurs within a classroom, the physical space becomes important. Okay. All right. So here's some considerations to take into uh, uh, take in mind. All right. What is the physical environment like? Okay. Are there are there posters there? Is it more of a relaxed space? Is it uh, more professionalized? Is it crowded? Is it more open? What is the lighting like? What um, well, what what do you see in terms of um, you know? Is it hot? Is it cold? What do you see in terms of the way people behave whenever they come in? Some students will come into a classroom, as we all know, being very comfortable. Others know that they're entering a space that is very controlled, and so their uh, the level of their speech and their interaction will become very muted as they walk in the door. So th these are things to keep in mind as you're going and doing your observation. The last one, okay, what values are conveyed through the organization and decor? One thing I want you to think about here, you are doing observations. That's what is being conducted. You're not going and making some sort of a, a blanket judgment statement on a space or the individual that decorated it. You're only saying what it is from your perspective. And if you can observe what goes on with the kids, you know, how they seem to react, all that much better. Okay, the participants, the actors and their roles, all right? If it's a class, if it's a hallway, wherever it is, how many people are there? How old are they? What does their body language uh, seem to say? What, um, you know, what kind of autonomy do they have? Do you see any kind of uh, informal social structure with all of the participants within this setting? Are there some that are excluded? If they are excluded, are they? Does this happen from their peers? Does it seem to happen from the teacher? Are they, um, are they separated by virtue of where they sit? Things to take into mind and all to record. Okay, activities and interactions. So, what do you see going on? Okay, is something being accomplished? What uh, is it? Is the setting oriented more around group work and things like that, or is it? Um, something that's more formal and regimented. Again, you're taking notes, you're writing things down uh, so that you can go and look back at what you saw and additionally make sense of it later on. When people go in to do an observation like this, they have an idea for how the dynamics of a particular setting work. I mean, we all do that intuitively. What I want you to be able to do is go back to your notes and use them to expand the picture. Okay, so frequency and duration. Okay, what happened? How long did it last? If you're observing teaching, how long did the teacher teach? Uh, how long is group work? Do they have a lot of class discussion? Are people raising their hands? If so, how long do they have to wait? These are the kinds of things to uh, keep in mind and to write down. And then subtle factors. Okay, what do you see that is perhaps not planned in this particular setting? What is it that is, is it good? Is it bad? Is it just a part of how this works? Is it unexpected? You're wanting to go and paint a portrait for how this setting seems to work. And you can take what you have drawn from this and you can go and use this to craft or refine interview questions that you may be going and asking the participants. Now, if you're not interviewing the participants of this setting, it may not be that relevant. But, well, maybe it will be. Maybe you're interviewing the teacher. Okay? But remember, you want to use one form of research data gathering activity, in this case an observation, to inform the rest of your project. Okay? So this is the, uh, this is the presentation on observations. Uh, this is really actually a lot of fun to do. Now, you're going to have an activity that you're going to be doing that is uh, outside the bounds of this online presentation. It's listed in the syllabus, but there is also going to be a short instructor video uh, for, with directions for your observation. So be, so be sure to check that out. And if you have any questions, you know how to get a hold of me. Bye.